it is massively appreciated and um it's it's just excellent for our our guys and girls to have something different to do on a Monday morning, especially. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just fantastic. So, to, to, to give up your time this morning is really appreciated. So, thank you so much for that. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, yeah, so first of all, the England camp in general, how's that going? It's going well. I'll firstly say hello to you all. I didn't realize there's 130 people. That's brilliant. Uh, good morning to you all. Um, it's going well. I'm actually just currently been coming back from a knee injury. So, we met up on Wednesday morning. Um, and then had a few tough sessions last week, but I've just been doing some rehab stuff. Um, did a big session on Saturday just to tick off my last thing and then ready to train train with the, the team on Monday. But yeah, it's been um, yeah pretty tough so far for the boys, I think, uh, just getting them in the right condition because we obviously haven't played for a while, a lot of us. We've had a few weeks off with games being cancelled um, compared to other nations who have still, still been playing. So... I think that match fitness is going to be huge. So, I certainly got that into the boys last week and then uh, fully ready to get prepped this week. So, has, has Eddie been uh, putting you through your paces? Yeah, he has. They had a, they had a big big uh, session on, on Saturday. Um, I was just watching on and I was <laughs> pretty brutal. And then I had my, my own session by myself afterwards, which wasn't, like, wasn't nice in the cold weather either. So, fantastic. Well, as, as I mentioned, Max, we've got. Um, Run about 130 pupils um, from a variety of sports, from, from, from rugby to hockey to netball to cricket. Um, Sutton Barnes School is, we're, we're a school of around 560, co-educational day and boarding school. Um, so the sort of the strength of us is, is very much our community and the fact that we've got such a fantastic uh, sporting provision and our sports pupils are, 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 are truly excellent and, and they, all, they all buy into our sort of vision, values and our ethos very much. Um, for the for the for the guys and the girls for the Sutton Valence School guys and girls, just a, a little bit of background on Max. Max, I hope you don't mind me just giving a bit of background on yourself. Um, Max started his uh, career at Bishop Stortford uh, Rugby Football Club and obviously played uh, schoolboy rugby at Felstead, uh, a school we know well. Um, Max played for England under 18 in 2015, uh, and a, a year later, 2016, was in the England under 20s. Uh, squad. Uh, that year then Max went on to play in the Junior World Cup in Manchester, I believe, um, winning winning that tournament, which is uh, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Um, Max, you play, you're a bit, bit, bit of a hybrid backs player in terms of fly half centre or full back. I think full back is a position you're playing currently. Um, but Max is part of the Saracen squad that have won many, many trophies domestically in Europe and, uh, and in Europe over the last few years. We've been fortunate enough to have the European Cup at Sutton Valence School for an open day um, last last season, which was absolutely fantastic. Nice. Um, Max signed a new contract with Saracens uh, last year, and that's included him spending a season-long loan at Bristol Bears, who were flying at the moment, and had a fantastic result against Bath on Friday. Um, incredibly, Max reached the, the final of the NatWest Vars, I believe, with Felstead. At under 18. Um, we actually got, yeah, we actually got there last year, uh, Max. But COVID actually, COVID, uh, we, we were doing a, we were doing a, t a team run on the Monday, and it was meant to be played on the Thursday, and uh, we had a dreaded phone call on Monday afternoon to say it would be cancelled. Yeah, so our, yeah, the first time the school had got to Twickenham, and so it was obviously incredibly disappointing. But um, but th there we go. Yeah. Um, and Max made his um, debut for England against Georgia in the Autumn Nations Cup in, in, in November. So, Max, thank you so much. If I can just ask the SV pupils, can you just make sure you're on all on mute, please? Uh, in, in, unless you are asking questions. Um, but, Max, thanks again for joining us. Is it OK if we kick off with... Uh, we've got seven eager Sports Award pupils ready to ask questions. Are we OK to get them started? Kick off, yeah. Fab, thank you. OK, uh... Alfie from the upper six, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off. Morning, Max. Hi, Alfie. Um, so, first, quite a standing question, but very important to young players. Uh, what advice would you give to someone aspiring to be a professional sports person, not necessarily just rugby? Uh, I think it's sort of striking the balance between, everyone says it, but working hard. I think that's the main thing, working hard at your game, working hard as, as a person. Um, 
but also along with that you have to make sure you enjoy it enjoyment's a big thing uh once that enjoyment goes you, you tend to then stop working hard so if you keep that that fire burning in the belly enjoy what you do um that really motivates you to to work hard and become the best player you can i'd say thanks very much for that max really appreciate that rachel rachel from the second form are you there for a question please what's your favorite meal when not playing morning rachel uh favorite meal when not playing I'd, it'd be hard not to go with a with a roast dinner, to be honest. Um, I can't say I, I've cooked one myself, but my mum be a roast beef, so I'd, yeah, I'd have to go with the roast dinner. Except some of the some of our senior players call it their cheat food, Max. Would you would, would would you go along with that, or is that a bit too harsh? It's quite the carby, but I mean, everyone <laughs> on a Sunday you've got to allow for it, haven't you? That's it's right. Be done. Absolutely, day of rest Sunday. Absolutely. Uh, Charles, Charles from the third form, if you wouldn't mind asking a question to Max, please. What has been the biggest sacrifice you have made for part of your rugby career? Morning, Charles. Um, biggest sacrifice? It probably comes early doors in your in your days of being a professional rugby player. I think it's just missing out on those social social things. Um, there's times when you've got to miss parties, you've got a game the next day. Um, you miss friends' holidays because you you have to train. Um, so yeah, I'd say the biggest sacrifice is a, is a sacrificing a bit of your social life with. Um, well, well, for me it was my school friends, um, but uh, you you obviously make up for lost time in in the future. But yeah, I'd say having to give up social social side of things um, to make sure you you make training or you you make games or whatever the next day. Thanks, Max, for that. Thank you. No worries. Katie, uh, for does the it, platform. Does it change how you play depending on whether there's a crowd or not? Hi, Katie. Um, it's definitely different. Um, you don't, well, especially at Twickenham, I, my debut is running out in front of no one instead of 80,000, so it's definitely different. Um, I wouldn't say it changes how I play, but it certainly probably eases the nerves that... <laughs> as it didn't feel like a, as a big of occasion. Um, so it definitely eased the nerves a bit. It probably made it a bit easier, but definitely still looking forward to, to getting out there when there are 80,000 people in the stadium. Fantastic. Thank you, Katie. Um, from the first one then, Jack, please. How important do you think goal setting is? Hi, Jack. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely important. Um, People go different ways about it. Um, I quite like not setting goals too far in the future. I kind of, I do it, so I do it year on year. I don't don't think five down, five years down the line, that's what I want to do, because uh, you never know what's going to happen within those five years. So I, I quite like keeping it to a yearly a yearly thing. But I think it's definitely crucial to sort of guide you in the right way and be clear with what you what you want to achieve. Um, whether it's over that year or over those five years. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely important. Max, with regards to goal setting, because it's a, it's a topic that we look at um, within our, our sports award uh, meetings, uh, we have those termly. It, do you have any advice on goal setting or is it purely yourself? Do you rely on any support network? Uh, I don't rely on any support networks. It just comes from me. Um, I used to be very against it because I used to say a few years back I would say oh, I want to play for England but I almost kind of thought that might be unrealistic I, don't, I didn't really know because the player I was back then was never going to be playing for England so I think it's about I, I try and not be too ambitious with it and say in 10 years time or within 10 years I want to play for the Lions so I never know if that would actually be true or if, if I'll actually be able to manage that so that's why I quite like keeping goal setting short so you know you're within distance and then it's actually an achievable goal for that that length of time um so i, I that's why i do it yearly um just to, like or seasonally should i say um to know what i want to try and achieve by the end of that year um knowing that it might it is relatively achievable whereas five years injury could hit or whatnot so you, you never know oh, that's fantastic thank you very much for that max um, Isabel from the lower six, please. 
Um, I was wondering what motivates you to achieve your goals? Uh, morning, Isabel. Um, that's a tough one. I think probably what motivates me is firstly trying to make my family and friends proud. Um, I have a big family who are very keen on rugby, always have been. Um, so a big thing for me is, is making them proud. Um, and then I think the main thing that motivates me is to see how good a rugby player I can be. Um, I think to, just to see where I can take it, to see how good I can become. Um, there's no limit on that. So that keeps me motivated to keep working as hard as I can to, to see where I can go. Max, did, did, did you always go to first at school or, or did you go yeah, to... Yeah, I, I was there literally from year one, yeah, all the way through. Right, OK, because it's obviously a fantastic a rugby school and a fantastic opportunity to, yeah. go to, to go to such a school. Brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Alfie, from the fifth form, please. Hi, Max. Hi, Alfie. Uh, what was your first training session like with England? Um, it, was it, was, it was straight into a tough session. Um, it wasn't too bad, to be fair, because I think if I... I've obviously been at Saracens where there's a lot of England players anyway. Um, eight, say eight of them. Um, so I already knew quite a lot, lot of the people. It's certainly a, a step up in intensity um, and work rate and fitness has to be up there. Um, and then just the concentration, you've got to be on the ball all the time. Um, so it's definitely a, a step up. Um, but one, I'd, I'd quite like to think I took two quite well. So... Fantastic. Thank you, Max. And back to Alfie from the upper six. Uh, so, Max, do you have any pre-game rituals? Anything you do every game? Uh, not necessarily rituals. Um, quite a superstition person, though. Um, so I kind of always make sure I wear the same skins um, and I always sort of do the same warm-up, same individual warm-up. Um, kind of, yeah, just to tick that box and just, uh, I, yeah, because I do get quite superstitious if something's a bit different. Um, yeah, it worries me a bit. So I try to stick to wear the same thing and, and do the same thing. What about boots, Max? Do you, do you have different pairs of boots for every match, or do you? Do you just... uh, it's tough. I, I try and I try go with boots which look good with the kit. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I uh, obviously had training boots, and then it, it's become less of a thing. I used to always wear the same boots, but now like some boots get knackered and. I get some boots from Nike and stuff, so you just got to keep on wearing new, new, new boots. So I, I haven't become as superstitious with boots from now. Thanks, Max. Okay, Rachel from the second form, please. What's your first ever memory in rugby? First ever memory. Um, it's a tough one, personally, from what I did. I remember playing just like tag and stuff at Bishop Stortford and being around my friends. Um, but I was obviously only, I was six years old when England won the World Cup and I remember that very vividly. Um, obviously watching Johnny Wilkinson drop that drop goal. So that, that was probably the first massive memory of rugby as a whole. Um, and then personally, yeah, just, just playing tag and stuff with friends um, when I yeah, really loved it and, and enjoyed being out there. Thank you, Max. Fantastic. Uh, Charles, back to Charles then, please, from the third form. Uh, how important is it to have other things to do away from rugby and what do you do? Uh, I think it's very important. Um, so if, if you've just got rugby going on, you can very much get overloaded with that. Um, so I have different things going on. I, I obviously mentioned about doing my open uni, a um, bit of education which sort of stimulates stimulates the brain away from rugby, uh, which is good just to keep a clear head when I do get into the rugby side of things. Um, so yeah, I think it's good to, to have something something else for sure. Um, otherwise it can very much get on top of you if all, all you're thinking about is one thing. Max, I know we spoke about it uh, slightly earlier, maybe uh, before some of the, the guys and girls uh, got online with us. But you're currently studying a university course, is that right? 
Yeah, so I, I, I study business management uh, at Open Uni, so it's all online. Um, I just do that part time. Um, and then, yeah, so this year I just have five assignments throughout the, throughout the year. I, I have an assignment due at the end of this month, so I'll have to do a bit of uni work uh, in camp uh, when back in my room and stuff. So uh, that's one way that I'm, I'm keeping my head fresh and, yeah, just to, to focus on something else a bit. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, back on to Katie then, please, from the fourth form. Who has been your biggest inspiration and why? Uh, biggest inspiration, probably already mentioned it, but I was, yeah, six years old when Johnny hit, Johnny Wilkinson hit the drop goal. So he was always a massive idol for me. Um, kind of grew up wearing the England shirt, Johnny Wilkinson on the back, number 10. I, was play, I played fly half throughout my early days. So he played my position. Uh, one of the best players in the world. So I always followed him and kind of looked up to him, wanting to be him. Um, so he's a, a big idol, an idol of mine. And I guess I could always say my, my dad's a bit of an inspiration as well. He's like rugby mad. Um, he basically lives his dream through me, which is uh, quite um, quite amazing. So yeah, those two have been, uh, been huge. And now on to Jack, please, from the first form. What type of sport would you have liked to be a professional in? There's quite a few, to be honest. Um, I, well, I played rugby, hockey, cricket growing up for uh, decent levels. Um, well, I obviously gave my hand at football, I think everyone does <laughs> at the start. Um, but I think some, something like Formula One, I, I love Formula One, that, that'd be amazing. Um, things like golf, would, would be amazing. Um, if I had to choose one, um, yeah, I'd probably say Formula One. Um, it's uh, yeah, pretty dangerous and dangerous sport, but uh, driving in those cars would be, would be amazing. Following the sun, uh, it's not too bad. But you, you, you played first team cricket and hockey back at school? Yes, yeah, so I played first team hockey, um, played, played for East of England under 16s. Um, and then played cricket as well, um, played for Essex cricket, um, all up to like under 16s. And that's when I kind of had to choose a sport uh, to go into. Couldn't really juggle all three at once. Um, thankfully, yeah, you could say I picked the right one, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's that's very similar to us at Sutton Valence. Many of our, our guys and girls play, play a variety of sports. And like you say, cricket. Hockey, I think the more you can do that, the, the better as well. Um, keep, yeah, juggling, they, they all count, they're all different skills and, and pay dividends in the end for whatever sport you choose. Um, so the more you can keep your options open to what sports you play, the better, I think. Yeah, that's very much our philosophy. Thanks for that, Max. That's great. Uh, back to Isabel, please, from the lower six. Um, what would you say is the ultimate goal in your rugby career? The ultimate goal? Um I guess the, the pinnacle of our sport um, for an English rugby player would probably be uh, the being to be a Lions player. Um, that would be the pinnacle. Um, so yeah, I, I guess yeah, you can't you can't hide away from that. That would be be the ultimate the ultimate dream. But um, yeah, we'll wait and see. And on to Alfie then from the fifth form. How would you describe Eddie as a coach? That's a good, great question. Um, he's a very clever coach. Um, he's very forward thinking. He kind of takes a step back, especially after the autumn. He's taken a step back and try and has tried to see where the game's going um, and to try and make sure that we get to the, get to that place first um, and be world beaters then. Um, so yeah, he's, he's clever in the way that he, he looks at data and stuff, sees where the game's going and then getting his players to that level before anyone else. Um, and he's also brilliant man management wise. He, he treats people differently to get the best out of them. Um, and he is very good at getting the best out of his players. Um, so yeah, I'd say that. Thank you, Max. Uh, Alfie, Alfie from the upper six, please. So if you had to choose, who would your favourite rugby player be? Past or present? Past is quite... Uh, present, sorry, is quite hard. As you, 
don't really <laughs> obviously follow quite a few players. Um, yeah, that is a tough one. I'd probably say, to be fair, I'd probably say my favourite one at the minute is, is Semi Redrada. Obviously, play with him at the minute. Um, he's a yeah superhuman in what he can do. Uh, a total athlete. Um, and yeah, to play with him is, is absolutely amazing. I just have to sit on his shoulder and you're going to get some opportunities. So he's a very uh, yeah um, fascinating player to play with. Um, and I don't know if you saw his try at the weekend, but that was pretty immense as well. So yeah, I'd say him at the minute. Thanks, Max. That's a pretty good answer. Um, he is incredible, isn't he? Yes. Rachel, second form, please. What's the worst and best advice you've ever received? Worst and best. Um, the worst would probably be, uh, it would have actually been before um, we won that Junior World Cup. Um, I think it's before the final, we actually got our shirts handed out and someone came in and, and spoke to us and kind of talked about how we have to go out there and win. Um, making it all about winning and stuff like that. And that didn't really resonate with many of us. And actually after he left, we were like, yeah, don't listen to a word he, th word he said, because at the end of the day, yeah, uh, winning is the goal, but so much more has to go into that, all the processes. Um, so so that was probably the worst, just to focus on winning. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more that we had to focus on, which would, the process you have to focus on and then the outcome will, will come with it. Um, so that was, yeah, wasn't a great one. Uh, the best would probably be what what I told um, you guys is about working hard and making sure you enjoy enjoy what you're doing. Um, especially if you, I mean, you want to make it a career, um, you've got to make sure you're enjoying it, and then and then from that, work, working hard and all the rest comes with it. Thank you, Max. Uh, Charles from the third form. I know Charles had a couple of internet issues. So we'll move on to Katie from the fourth form. Katie from the fourth form. Do you spend time with teammates away from rugby? Uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time. Um, obviously tough at the minute. Um, but I actually live with my teammate, Ben L. We, we live together in Clifton. Um, and I've always, for what, be five or six years, I've been a professional sportsman. The first year I lived with, there was eight of us in the house. Um, then lived in a four person with teammates then um from yeah then on always lived with one of my teammates um at saracens we, yeah we we're always socializing outside of the club together um it's very much yes yeah, very much your own sort of little bubble um you i don't think anyone from coming out of school no one really understands what it's like and we're all sort of living the same sort of life um people go off to uni and stuff um, and we're able to sort of try try and get used to living this professional life. So it's um, quite a good one. But yeah, we, uh, most of my time I, I spent with my teammates away from the club. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. There we go. Oh, Chestnut, thank you. Um, on the Jack then for the first one. How do you mentally prepare for games? Um, I don't do too much, to be honest. Uh, everyone's different with how they how they mentally prepare, whether it's whether it's music or whatnot. Obviously, listen to a bit of music on the way to the on the way to the ground and stuff. But um, I try and keep as clear ahead as possible. Um, I'm quite a laid back person, so I don't try and work the occasion up too much in my head. Um, sort of, yeah, just try and try and keep chilled. Um, Obviously, have little thoughts about obviously what moves we're running and stuff. Just tick that over in my head, but I yeah, I try and actually not think about the game too much at all, um, and, that, and that kind of leads me nicely into the game um, and how I play is quite instinctive and stuff. So I don't overthink, overthink too much. Just go in with a clear head, and that, that's my main thing. Fantastic, Max. Um, thank you so much for your time this morning. It is really, really appreciated by uh, by Sutton well, Island School. Uh, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much to those uh, the, the seven questions students who have asked questions this morning. Um, I thought they were great. Uh, Max, you've been fantastic. So all the very best uh, in, in the England camp. All the very best next Saturday against Scotland for the, uh, the up and coming. 
matches. I sincerely hope you, you get a lot of time on the pitch because you've played fantastically well this season. And I'm sure you're going to tear it up, no doubt. Um, thank you very much. Cross. Yeah, fingers crossed. Mark, I appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much, Max. Bye-bye. Cheerio.